Hi everybody and thank you for joining me. This is the second probability video and in this one we're going to have a look at the types of calculations and estimations that you might have to make using probability. Let's start by looking at the definition of probability. If you don't understand anything about the topic and you want to look at the basics, I suggest you have a look at my basic probability video first. But to summarize, the probability of something happening is its likelihood. We ask ourselves, how likely is it that something's going to happen? What are the chances of it happening? And we measure probability on a probability line, which goes from zero to one. And if something has a probability of zero, then it is impossible. If it has a probability of one, then it is certain to happen. Everything else falls somewhere in between. Let's quickly look at a couple of examples. Firstly, if you are tossing a coin, it has a heads, it has a tails, and there is the even chance that it will land on one or the other. Therefore, there is a half chance that it will land on heads and a half chance that it will land on tails. Therefore, if we say what is the probability of it landing on heads, then it is one out of two, a half chance. Consider instead that we're going to roll a dice. If we look at a dice, it has six sides. Each of those sides has a different number. So if we look, for instance, at the probability of rolling a four, well, there are six sides on a dice, so there are six different possible outcomes when you roll it. The number four only appears once on that dice. So out of the six possible ways that it could land, one of them is a four. Therefore, there is a one in six chance. As a fraction, it is a sixth. It would come somewhere low down in the probability line. Let's then ask ourselves, how likely is it that you are going to roll a seven on a normal dice? Well, there isn't a seven, therefore it is impossible to do so. It has a probability of zero. If on the other hand, you were going to roll the dice and ask yourself, what is the probability of rolling any number between one and six? Well, you are certain to roll a number between one or six because those are all the options. Therefore, that would have a probability of one. In fact, the example with the dice that I just gave is quite important. Let's have a look at the numbers on a dice. We have one, two, three, four, five, and six. So if I am looking to roll a number one, well, out of the six possible results, these six here, the chances of rolling a one is one in six. There is only one number one. The chances of rolling a two is also one in six. There is only one number two out of the six numbers. And so it goes on. The chances of rolling any individual number is one in six. The important thing here is if we add up all the possible outcomes, then we end up with one. So if we look at all the possible outcomes, add up their probabilities, we will always end in one. Let me show you this a different way. Here we have a bag full of colored counters. We have green ones, red ones, and blue ones. What we are going to do is put a hand into the bag without looking and completely at random draw out one of the colored counters. Let's have a look at the probability that you might draw out each of the colors. Well, in the bag altogether, there are 10 counters. So you could pull any one of those out. The total number of possible outcomes is therefore 10. Out of the 10, five of them are green. So you have five chances out of 10 of drawing a green counter, probability, five out of 10. With the red one, well, we have the same 10 counters in there, but this time only three of them are red. So we have a lower probability of three out of 10. And with blue, even a lower chance because there are only two blue out of the 10 counters. The interesting thing and the important thing is that if we add 
up all the probabilities, the green, the red and the blue, we end up with 3 tenths plus 2 tenths plus 5 tenths and the total is 1. Because it is absolutely certain that when you put your hand in the bag, you will draw out a counter of one colour or another. That is a certainty, therefore it has a probability of 1. And we use this fact in a number of questions. Another point that's worth mentioning here is that when we are using fractions to describe a probability, and we often do, it is perfectly okay to simplify them in the way you would any fraction. So a probability of 5 out of 10 can simplify down to a half, therefore the probability is 1 out of 2. And similarly with the blue one over here, the probability would simplify down to 1 in 5. Now let's have a look at something you might see in an exam. I'm using the same example as I've just done with the counters in the bag, the red, the green and blue. This time the information is in table format. And the first thing you'll notice that the probabilities are now being quoted as decimals rather than fractions. This is perfectly normal. We do use both. So we know that the red in the bag was 5 out of 10 or 1 in 2. Therefore, it's a half. It's 0 0.5. Green was 3 in 10, which has a decimal is 0 0.3 and blue was 2 in 10. We also said that when we added them together the total was 1. Therefore when answering this question the same has to be true. The three probabilities have to add up to 1. So if we have 0 0.5 already and 0 0.3 there's a total of 0 0.8. 1 minus 0 0.8 equals 0.2. Therefore, the probability of taking out a blue counter is 0.2, and all the possibilities add up to 1. I'm going to continue using this set of information about coloured counters, but talk about something called expected frequency. What this means is, once we have the probability of each of the different colours of counters, we can use that information to estimate what would happen if we repeated the experiment a number of times. So for instance, if we were to put our hand in the bag 300 times, the situation is the same every time the same 10 counters are in the bag. If we want to estimate how many times we would draw out a green counter, we take the number of times we draw out a counter and we multiply it by the probability of it being a green counter. So 300 times 0 0.3 is 90. Therefore, using the probability of it being a green counter every time and multiplying by the number of times we draw out a counter, we get an estimate of how many times it is likely to be a green one. Similarly, out of that same 300, if we multiply it by 0 0.5, the probability of it being red, we would estimate that we would draw out a red counter 150 times, and with the blue counter it would be times 0 0.2, and that would be an estimate of 60. And of course if we add all the estimates up, 90 plus 150 plus 60, that would be the 300 times. A probability tree is a diagram that we can use when we are combining one or more events and we want to look at a combined probability. I'm going to use coloured counters in a bag again, but this time we have just red and blue. There are 10 counters. This time there are 6 red and there are 4 blue. Therefore, the probability of taking out a red is 6 out of 10 and blue it is 4 out of 10. Now here is the beginning of our probability tree and effectively the tree has two branches. One of those branches is the direction you would take if the first counter drawn out was a red one and the second is the journey if it were a blue one. To each of these branches we can add the probability. We know that the probability of taking out a red counter 
is 6 out of 10. And in fact, let's simplify that before we put it into the tree. Therefore, it's 3 out of 5. Similarly, the chances of taking out a blue counter are 2 out of 5. So that number belongs on the bottom branch. What happens now is whichever counter was taken out, it is now put back in and we perform the same act again. We take out a coloured counter. At this point, the tree grows more branches. Let's take a look at what might happen. Well, in the top half of the tree, the first branch from the beginning was the branch which resulted in a red counter being taken out. Let's assume for the moment that this has happened, the red counter has been put back into the bag. So we are at this position here with the red counter. We try again this time, just like the first time, we could either end up with a blue or a red counter. And because the same counters are in the bag, the probabilities are exactly the same. There's a three in five chance of it being red and there is a two in five chance of it being blue. Now let's move down to the bottom half of the tree. And in this situation, the first counter that was taken out was a blue one, and that has now been replaced. So from there, we could again, on our second attempt, take out a red ball, probability three out of five, or a blue ball, probability two out of five. So we have now drawn a tree which has all the possibilities. We could have drawn out a red counter followed by another red counter, or we could have drawn out a red counter and then a blue counter. And similarly, on the bottom half, we could have drawn out blue followed by red or blue followed by blue. Therefore, all the options have been covered. So if we want to consider the probability that the first counter was red and so was the second, we look at the probabilities on the two branches. So in each case, in this example, it is three in five. So we have three fifths and we multiply by the second probability, three fifths. So three out of five times three out of five. In this case, we get nine over 25. So nine out of 25 is the probability that you would bring out two red counters in a row. Let's take that back a step and look at another option. Let's consider this time that the first counter was a red, but the second counter was a blue. In this case, we have two different probabilities to multiply. The first one is the same. The first counter was red with a probability of three out of five. The second one, however, was blue, which has a probability of two out of five. So in this case, we multiply them together and get six out of 25. Therefore, it is a different probability that the counters would have been different colors. The bottom half of the tree does exactly the same. So the probability of it being a blue followed by a red is two over five times three over five. So once again, six over 25. If, however, we are looking at the probability of taking out a blue counter followed by another blue counter, we have two over five multiplied by another two over five, giving us a probability of two blue counters in a row of four over 25, four chances in 25. Finally, I want to have a look at something called relative frequency. Here we have a situation with a bag full of colored counters we know that there are 100 counters in the bag. We also know they're red and blue, but we do not know how many of each. Therefore, we're going to run an experiment. We are going to put our hand in the bag 300 times and draw out a counter. Each time we will replace it and do the same thing again. So 300 attempts. We find 
that after 300 tries, the red counter has appeared 120 times. So we can use this as a probability, or at least an estimation of probability. If the red counter is appearing 120 out of every 300 times, then we can estimate the probability of being 120 out of 300, which simplifies itself down to 2 over 5. So we have a probability of 2 out of 5 that the counter will be red. It is from here that we can make our estimation. We can assume from the figures that two-fifths of the hundred counters in the bag are red ones. Therefore, we have 40 red counters. It must also mean, if you want to check your figures, that the 180 other attempts all came out with a blue counter. Therefore, that would be 180 over 300, which would simplify down to 3 over 5. That would mean that 3 fifths of 100 would be blue, and that is 60. And of course, 40 plus 60 is 100, so we have accounted for all the counters. And it is important to note here that if we're going to carry out an experiment such as this, the more times we try to draw out a counter, the more accurate our estimate would be. If you only repeated this 10 times, you may not get a real good picture of what is inside the bag. If you carried it out a thousand times or 10,000 times, your estimated probability is going to become more accurate. And that covers everything that we need to look at in terms of probability. I hope that's been of use to you. If it has, please do subscribe to my channel. And also, if you hit the notifications button, you'll get to hear of any new videos that I bring out. Thank you very much.